What's happening guys, Michael Andrulli here and I want to uh, show you how to do jab cross or the best thing you can do with your jab cross in less than two minutes. I know you have all your feet, hands are up, elbows are tucked in, prone to strength, your head and hands are moving, you hit the bags on different levels. Of course, besides the strike, you can lead to nothing. You're in constant motion, you're working your slips, moving forward, back, left, and right, and changing your range up or changing up your distance. You're not too close all the time, you're not too far all the time, you're constantly, constantly, constantly at the box. Dropping punches from different angles, coming from the bottom, coming from the top, changing your levels. So, really basic, simple ideas. Keep yourself moving, don't let your hands drop, of course, but you gotta put a little more chaos into your striking, especially if you're doing it for fitness and may. Make sure you, you're moving those punches all over the place and be prepared for that chaos because when you train for that chaos, you'll be a lot more comfortable when the chaos ensues. If you have any questions, concerns, hit me up, Mike, at CQ Trainer, like it, build a family comment it and uh thanks for watching guys you're my buddies you're my family now let me know if you need anything later peace what not to do especially if you've been doing it for a while and what not to do is stand in the same spot and repeat the motion over and over without any variations if you don't have that variations your jab cross will never be really good because if the target moves you're completely out of whack so remember your base make sure you have a good base your stance is good, wherever's the most comfortable for your stance, and depending on what your goal is, kickbox, MMA, or boxing, or fitness, you gotta get a, a stance you feel good with, and you can throw strikes with. You want variations. When you throw your jab cross, variations to me would be different speed, okay, different heights, lengths, of course, uh, different powers, harder or lighter. Put all that in during your combination. Make it chaotic. You want to have a lot of options, you want to practice from a lot of different situations. So don't stand there and throw arm punches. You want to be all over the place exploding. So what I mean by that is your weight's on the balls of your feet, hands are up, elbows are tucked in, being thrown your strength, your head and hands are moving, you're hitting the bag at different levels. Of course, besides the striking can lead to knuckles. You're in constant motion, you're working your slips, moving forward, back, left, and right, and changing your range up or changing up your distance. You're not too close all the time. You're not too far all the time. You're constantly, constantly in the box. If you have any questions, concerns, guys, hit me up, Mike at CKOTrainer.com. Keep uh, subscribing, liking, commenting. We love you guys. Thank you. And see you soon. Later. What's happening, guys? Michael Andrew here in CKO Kickboxing. Um, we're going to show you the spinning elbow. It's going to be loud. Got the cue boys smashing things, which are good. So the spinning elbow and the spinning backhand, spinning back fist. Everybody's getting caught up because they're going too straight into the bag. You're spinning but not sliding off to the side. You need to create some room. Uh, the e easiest way to do this is, is start to fake punches that way so that you uh, just naturally pull into it. So anytime we do the spinning move, if we just spin here, come up short. So the, the idea is you position yourself out here. Pretend you're like a hurricane going up the coast. You want to kind of roll with it. So the best thing to do with the spinning elbow, first off, thumbs down, and you're going to pop back at the end. Start it out with the jab, set up with a lot of jabs here. Jab around the bag, jab around the bag, jab, jab. And when you're going to double up the jab, you just fake it here and then pull through. So what we can do is set it up by the jab you here, then you can turn your head and throw the elbow. Lots of jab, hands up, elbows coming in, popping it back and forth. Selling it, selling it, selling it, lots of jabs on the head. And then just jab off to the side and pull the elbow through. Either way, if you're too far out, then you can come back with a full spinning back fist. Double jab, 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 jab. Weights on the back, just throw it out, just throw it out. And then just spin right through. So we got that jab. Long straight punch from the chin back to the chin, step and step and step. And then pull straight through. Hopefully that was a good explanation if you want to do the full back fist, especially after we do the, uh, the front kick, side step out, and then just pull the fist. Either way, you're going to need some room. Say you're going to do a left front kick, left side kick. You want to throw a right spinning back end, you want to pick your left foot, step it out here, turn your head, and then pull through. Pull through, even though I just grazed it, I still got it off, and you can still throw another strike out. Turn your head around. 
back this is uh, pretty much a short shot. You can hit snap through it. If you have any questions, concerns, guys, hit me up at ckotraining.com. Keep uh, subscribing, liking, commenting. We love you guys. Thank you. And see you soon. Later. Drilla here, local neighborhood Keto Guido right here in CKO kickboxing and basically what I want to do is show you the last two moves, the last two videos combined. We're going to do a combination and then I'll roll up something commonly I do in class which is to do some strikes and then come in with some secret ninja moves the government doesn't want you to know about. So your hands are up, elbows are tucked in. Combination to review if you haven't seen the video. It's a jumping front kick. Knee up, pop, jab cross, side step, hook, Roundouts. All on the same side. Oops, excuse me. Left knee. Up. Pop. You watch the video, watch the story. Knee up. Pop. Jab cross. Side step. Hook. Roundouts. Get loose. Get relaxed. Knee up. Jab cross. Side step. Possible right hook instead. Roundouts. Last one, which I really like, is knee up. Pop. Pop it in. Jab cross. Side step. Keep the hook and throw them around the house. Then you've got to stop. Hand down. Whole body comes down with it. Then you're going to step back. After 10 reps, drop your knee down. Butt on the ground. Roll over. Tripod. Hips press forward and a little bit to the side. Free the knee. Use your hands if necessary. 10 times. Five on each side. Turn the hips over. Use your shoulders. Rotate. Knee comes out. Shadow boxing. Drop the knee. Butt down. Over. And then maybe just for fun, you can combine the two for a couple reps. Hopping front kick. Jab cross. Hook. Roundhouse. Drop the right knee. Butt down. Sit back. Turn the hips over. Pop it back up. Now you gotta do the other side. Jab cross. Hook. Roundhouse. So there you have it, guys. Combine the two moves. Probably make this a three pointer. If you have any questions, concerns, hit me up, Mike at CKOTrainer.com. Visit Mike Landrula. Type Mike Landrula to YouTube, to Facebook, Twitter, and uh, let's become friends, man. I'm, uh, I'm ready to give you the true knowledge right from the teeth. Have a fantastic day. I'll see you soon. Later. What's happening guys, Michael Andrulli here in CKO Kickboxing with some moves, some tips, some tricks, some kickboxing, boxing, MMA, cross training, just human life. Uh, that's how the moves are inspired by what the things you do normally or should be able to do normally to be healthy and happy. So today we're going to do a Nini Toto, Jose Q, Invisible Roll Up. And I'm going to break down each piece so that you can get it in class. If you watched the last week's combo of the week, you saw a jumping front kick, jab cross sidestep, hook roundhouse. So you can just take that, do 10 reps, and then merge it into this, just like any other combination. So the knee, knee, toe, toe. What's important here is upper body. Many people get, um, when you're just starting out, you just go into this wacky, I'm gonna just do so many reps, I'm gonna beat myself down. It's all you see in the marketing from the internet and the TV is just beat yourself down, just beat yourself to death. But really what we wanna do is kind of train the body with the mind we want to build pathways so that you understand how to use your body, especially on striking. Lifting weights is a completely different animal. Striking, you gotta let it flow. It's rolling up. So doing moves like this, we're trying to build your technique. I'm trying to create good technique by giving little components of the drill. And what I'm doing here is every time I stand up, and I learned this from Team Endgame, Ed Rowan, he used it as a conditioning drill for wrestling. Sit down low, you fuck your hands, stretch your quads, run foul if you're ready to shoot in. But it's fantastic for stripes too because you can push off your back foot. And then as you do it, you start to recognize that I have humongous muscles proportionally to my body that can work when I throw across or a hook, right? And on strike, so you can unlock these. Now the next. Hey guys, Michael Andrew back here with the Nini Toto Jose Q Invisible Get Up. And uh, let's just name the thing the. Uh, Tri, tripod, just to shorten it up. So the tripod, what we're gonna do is go from knee knee toe toe, drop the foot back and be careful here because this, this is critical. When you drop back, if you're just starting out, use your hand, post up, 
Elbows cinched in tight. Remember that on almost everything. Push-ups, Everest Mount Climbers, striking, elbow cinched in tight. Right here. You gotta be careful with that knee. You're gonna lay back all the way, right? Roll the knees up. Make it easy on yourself. Use momentum. Somebody was like, well, that makes it easier. That's the point. Now your opposite foot's gonna go forward and uh, you're gonna stick this foot under your butt. The way to get out without hurting your knee is to use a little bit of momentum. Turn onto one side of your hip. You don't want to be flat here. You don't want to come up. You have two hips on the ground and then go into this position. Come on one side of your hip and then press your hips forward, not completely forward, but a little bit out to the side. Then you can take the pressure off the knee. Grab the ground with the ball of foot and stand up. Sit down those. You drop, butt down, roll the weight. Turn up to a hip, foot out, press your hips forward, right foot back, sit down low. Definitely do some striking. Drop the knee down. Cut right over. Just forward. Shadow boxing. So you have many, many moves here. Lots of transitional moves. It's going to help you sit down into your punches. Besides that, you've got knocked down. Pop back up. Or you can make your workouts more interesting. Or when you're 68 years old and you fall down, you're actually able to pop back up because you've been doing it for 30 years. So working on that, putting weight on your shoulders, it's gonna help. The last piece would be to roll completely over the shoulder. We're not ready for that in class. Head through, press your hips forward, shadow box. Drop the knee, butt down, twist. Here we go, boom, boom. Shadow box at the top. So stick around for part three, which will be to connect the first combination, jumping front kick, jab cross side step hook, roundhouse into that uh, tripod movement we just did. Stick, stick around, see you later, right back. Combo of the week, knee up, jumping front kick, reset, jab cross, side step hook, Roundhouse. Nice, loose, relaxed. Knee up. Jab, cross, jab. Right back to your chin. Cross, step, and twist. Side step. Throw the hook. Now you're on the side of the bag, right? You're here. Now you're hitting a completely different angle. The roundhouse is open. Lately, I've been trying to bring my head down to throw the roundhouse and even knife it in, in a bit. So, knee up. Jumping front kick. Jam cross, side step hook, roundhouse. Knee up, side step hook, roundhouse. Now, you can see a natural progression. I'm just picking one or two different things you can do. You can come in with the jumping front kick, right? Pop, jam cross. You can side step and throw this hook, you know, and then the roundhouse up top. Or even wiser is to maybe miss with that hook. And throw the roundhouse up top. So let's try those two variations. Knee up, jumping front kick, jab cross, side step, hook, turn it up, roundhouse. A little bit tougher, but let's try it this way. Hop in, knee up, kick, jab cross. I'm gonna intentionally side step, miss with the hook. Or maybe you come in with the progression of the combination. Hop in, front kick, jab cross, side step, hook. Roundhouse. You try that one way, you come back, do that maybe once or twice, and then you mix it up. Jab, cross, excuse me. Hop, front kick, jab, cross, boom, boom, side step, pull the other hook, the other roundhouse, and then finally in a trilogy, you're gonna fake the hook and throw the roundhouse over the top. Sell the hook, you've done it once or twice before. It's the same combination, small variations, so you can play around with it. A nice move to combine that, we're gonna do in the next video, and we'll bring them together. So your combination, one more time. Knee up, hopping front kick. That alone is a lot of fun to do. Come in, jab hard, cross twist, side step hook, roundhouse. I almost threw the right hook because it felt more comfortable at that point. You should trust those instincts. If you feel like you're side stepping, you should throw the right hook, Go with that the best you can. Improvise and uh, try to constantly vary the motion and the speed of the combination. If you can throw it fast, like you know karate, you're not gonna get as much power. If you throw it slower, you can get more power per strike. And you really wanna hit hard, step it. Maybe you wanna throw the jab cross fast 
cover up and throw them up. But maybe you want to sit down, really dig deep, and explode out on a jab cross. Park jab cross, side step hook, roundhouse. Same combination. The way you look at it, the focus, the energy that you bring to the combination either makes it great or a crappy combination. See there, you know, Richard Simmons, Billy Blanks, they probably have kickboxing DVDs. Uh, hopefully your man's as much stands out because you need to flow, learn, work your own method, your own rhythm. So you want to move around, show up and mimic other people that are successful, see what works with them and realize what my strengths are and work towards those. And one key for me is to not move too much, but just move enough. Some people just sit down, punch a doctor, he just stays in nice and tight and delivers the strikes. I like to move and stay loose. But you have to foster, foster that and really make sure that your technique keeps getting better and better, progressing deeper and deeper. More with the striking because you're probably getting bored. Front kick, jab cross, pick this up, side step, roundhouse, front kick, jab cross, side step, right hook this time, right leg roundhouse, jab cross maybe again, side step, hook, hook, roundhouse, switch it up, change it up. One uh, hook in a different spot. Besides that, guys, Stick around, next video is going to be the Nini Toto, Jose Q, Invisible Get Up, and then the best thing is to merge these two together. Check back in a minute. times in the past to add a little bit more there's a lot of people standing straight up on their hooks whether you're doing for fighting workout or you just want to learn your hooks you should not only for defense but it pulls a lot of power it's like uh, we do the Everest mountain climbers if you haven't seen that video 600,000 views when you pull your head up and down from this position hard it helps the body get into the next position same thing on your hooks you're gonna bring your ear down and pull by through when you throw in power hooks or just add, to mix it up. Occasionally, yeah, you're gonna stand up straight with your hooks. But at this level, look at all the targets. You should envision all the targets on the bags. Not just here, not just there. There's little dots all over, targets all over, and you wanna hit those targets. So one way to do that is open up on your hook. Open up the elbow. As long as you keep the elbow behind the wrist, you'll be set. As long as you turn from the hips and not just the arm, you're gonna be set. Take your head with the hook. So if you can throw a left hook, turn your hips, turn your head, pull the ear either way. It doesn't look like much, but you'll notice, and I'm guilty of it, everybody's guilty of it, you start getting fatigued, you throw hooks like this. You don't move your head, even if you're hitting hard, it's tough to keep your head stationary and hit hard. So my recommendation, turn the whole body over on your hooks. Use your ear as a guide and pull it through. So every time you throw your hooks, Changing your level of your head. Good defensive move, really good power move. It pulls you into the strikes. It pulls you deep into the strikes. Keep your chin tucked, keep popping the weight back and forth. Remember, longer hooks open up the elbow, tighter hooks close up the elbow. Dangling your elbow, and don't just use your arm to get there. Bring yourself in with your feet and get the idea out of your head that hooks are about working your arms. That's not true at all. It's about the entire body coming through in one motion all the muscles contracting in a proper sequence so you can throw the power all at once. Occasionally double it up, move in and out. That's the games you gotta play. You gotta set constraints for yourself. But that's just a little idea that can go a long way. Not just on hooks, crosses, jabs. Move your head, throw with your hand, and you're gonna be able to sync all these motions up to give yourself harder shots, more powerful shots that burn more energy and you uh, will get more results from doing the same workout. So if I got your technique even 1% better, every class after that, that means you're going to improve, you're gonna burn more energy, and you'll start getting a compounding effect. That's what you're looking for. So getting your technique better is gonna give you this unbelievable compounding effect where every class you take, every time you throw the strike, more energy is gonna be burnt, and you're gonna get a better result. So if you're near a CKO, check out a class, guys. You're gonna love it, beating the bag down. It's a lot of fun, it's not just a workout. If you're not, hit up uh, Kickboxing Heavy Bag Workouts and I'll uh, pick up the collection, which is three DVDs and uh, four audio classes. So it's just the tools are there, the opportunities there. 
take it guys you don't have that much time you have busy schedule you want to get your fitness in you have to have the proper tools the proper environment to do it